to AC practical 11.1 power factor correction. So this is further application of parallel AC currents. We're going to be putting an inductor and a resistor in parallel with each other and have a look at the relationship of the currents around the circuit. Then we're going to add a capacitor to correct the power factor and see what effect that has. So let's get on and have a look at that. First thing you need to do is your risk assessment. So don't forget to identify the hazards, the supervision level that you will use for each of those, uh, some idea of the risk class, high, low, or medium, and then the control measures that you're going to put in place to control that risk. So here is our basic circuit. We've got a voltmeter in parallel with the supply, just so we know what the supply voltage is. We're going to have an inductor, a capacitor, and a resistor represented by our lamp here, all in parallel. And you'll notice that uh, all the starts are connected in yellow, all the finishes are connected in red. So in this setup picture, we're simply demonstrating that we have all the items in this circuit are all at one point or another going to be connected in parallel. Our supply is about 28 volts, our inductor is 1343 millihenries, our capacitor is 20 microfarads, and our resistor when it's on or in its hot state is 88 ohms. So here's our circuit diagram we're going to start with. And we're going to be measuring the supply current in using a clip on ammeter, then we'll be measuring the current in the inductive branch again with the same clip on ammeter, and then thirdly, we're going to measure the current in here. Then we're going to represent those in a phase diagram to demonstrate what's happening. So here's our basic setup. I'll just change my pointer arrow. And you can see here, we're measuring the supply current and the supply voltage. So you can see at about 26.8 volts for our supply and 200 milliamps is our voltage in. You can see that our inductor has been connected in parallel with our lamp or our resistor. You'll notice that the capacitor not connected at all. So we're measuring total current coming in at 200 milliamps. Now let's look at the second picture. And you can see here I've picked up just the leg into the inductor itself. And it tells us that it is drawing 50 milliamps. So that's this reading here. I've put it in the table. 50 milliamps. And our voltage, of course, hasn't changed. Then our third measurement is the measurement of the current into the resistor. You can see it looped in here, just the one lead into the resistor, and we're pulling 190 milliamps. So our clip on our meter telling us 190 milliamps. And as I mentioned before, at the moment, the capacitor is not connected. So there's our basic readings. 26.8 volts, 200 milliamps total current coming into the circuit, 50 milliamps in the inductor and 190 in the resistor. So here's a phase diagram representing what's going on. Again, voltage is our reference because it's the one constant in the circuit, which we said was about uh, 26.8. Volts. Our current in the resistor at 190 and our current in the inductor at 50. On the next diagram, we're simply going to top to tail those values and work out what the current is. So here's the diagram done for you a little bit more neatly.
So effectively we have, there's our 200 milliamps in here, and we've got about 20 degrees is my estimate in here. And of course that is a lag. here and we've simply topped tailed that got the reference point and then drawn a line from the origin back to that point and there's the current flowing in the circuit total in reference to the voltage of course we'd like to see if we can get this line back here a lot more closely by adding some capacitive current. So that's our next task, is to uh, add some capacitive current in here to counteract and bring our phase angle back or our power factor back. So here's the readings that I took. So you can see now our inductor is in the circuit, our resistor is in the circuit, but now we've also added the capacitor into the circuit. And you can see they're all looped together in parallel. All the reds go to the starts, all the yellows go to the finishes. Voltage hasn't changed, remains the same, and our supply current has now dropped a little to 190 milliamps. Our inductive current hasn't changed and our resistive current hasn't changed but we have added in our capacitor and we now have 80 milliamps flowing in the capacitor. So will this make a difference to the angle? The answer to that is yes it will. Why? because this value here has actually gone down. So our 190 milliamps has gone down from 200. So what does this look like as a phasor diagram? So here's the phasor diagram. And all I've done here is taken the original diagram and just added the current. So on the next diagram, I'm simply going to add that up in this direction. And I'll remove the bits of the diagram that we, uh, we don't need. So here's our final diagram. And here's our 80 milliamps. I've just topped the tail that down into here can see where I'm dotting it. I've got this point here and the resultant current is about 180 or 190 milliamps in here reduced down from our, our, our R total. But the total from the previous one was actually the addition of the I and the L currents at 200 milliamps and we've dropped down to about 180 or maybe even 190 milliamps in there. So our phase angle has reduced quite considerably. Here's our phase angle in there and that's only about three degrees. But you'll notice it's now lead. We've now got a lead situation by two or three degrees so we've actually added a lot more capacitive current than we really needed because we have now gone into a slight lead situation better than the uh, 20 degrees lag that we had but we're now in a slight lead position so by adding some capacitive current or capacitive reactants or VARs because that's effectively what this is we added volts amps reactive to the circuit at 90 degrees opposed to the inductive current we've been able to reduce the voltage and 
spring the power factor or the angle between voltage and current to much smaller value. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, prac number 11.1, and uh, we'll see you at the next prac.